Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be talking about Marathon Skin Protectant. But first, if you could hit like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated as it does help my channel grow. So let's get started. So Marathon, it can be used on um, dry skin intact, um, moist, or uh, non-intact damaged skin. It provides a long-lasting, waterproof, durable, flexible, uh, breathable film barrier that is um, a light purple in color. The film barrier remains intact during con uh, conditions of continued and repeatable exposure to moisture or other irritants. Um, the product does wear off over time. Um, it, it does not need to be removed at all. And the product does come in two different sizes, which I will talk about the different sizes um, towards the end of this video. So indications for use. When are we going to be using this? Um, so first off, it can be used on all ages, including neonatals. Um, when other skin protectants aren't working um, or being effective, we go to this. Um, it's great for moisture associated skin damage, incontinence associated skin damage. Um, it's good in skin folds um, from damage related to adhesive dressings. So sometimes when you're just taking off that adhesive dressing, it causes a skin tear um, just because it's causing damage underneath that tissue, especially in ostomies. I find that so this is a great choice to give that layer of skin, especially when you have to put another ostomy patch right over top of it. This is a great choice. Um, and it's also um, great for protection uh, against friction and shearing. Um, so some precautions for this product. You just want to make sure that you let the product dry for 60 seconds um, before allowing it to come in contact with any other uh, tissues or products, okay? Um, so if it's in a skin fold, just make sure that you keep that fold separated for 60 seconds before letting it come together or it's going to stick it together, okay? It will actually hold it together. Um, if you're applying it to a moist area, um, the solution will dry very quickly, um, but they will have a warming sensation. So just warn the patient about that. It is a warming sensation when there is moisture in that area already. Um, this may also enhance the effect of the adhesive products. Um, so say your ostomy when you're, when you're changing that. Um, if you're applying this first, it will stick a lot better to that, but also please make sure it dries for 60 seconds so it can work properly before putting that on. So contraindications for this product, we're not gonna use this on full th thickness or bleeding wounds. OK, um, we're not going to use it on secondary or third degree burns, infected areas. Um, if you have a medication patch or powder, um, ointments, different creams, you're not going to apply this underneath them, OK, because it will not allow them to penetrate the skin properly. Um, we're not going to use this on mucosa membranes or around the eyes at all. Um, and don't use this product if the patient has a sensitivity or allergy to any of the ingredients. So on our first application, we want to make sure that we are cleansing the skin appropriately and ensuring that all traces of any previous skin products are removed. Then you're going to pat the, the um, tissue dry, okay? Um, so next, with the actual applicator itself, you hold it upright um, so that's the white sponge is at the top. Okay, so you're going to hold it with your thumb and your forefinger and you're going to hold in the middle of the tube and you're going to squeeze it until you hear a crackling sound. Okay, so there's an act, there's actually a sealed inner tube and so you're breaking this, but you're not going to bend it or snap the tube. You're just going to squeeze it until you hear a crackling sound. You're then going to turn the applicator downwards. So the sponge tip is going to go 
at the bottom, and you're going to wait five seconds, and this allows the solution to saturate the sponge. So the sponge is actually going to turn purple. So you have two choices um, to follow um, to actually apply this. So just your standard method is um, wait for it to saturate and lightly stroke in one direction um, and you're, you're avoiding overlapping previous areas, um, just going over that area, kind of brushing it on um, and it will turn a light violet color. So it's a paper thin film that will, will be applied over the skin. Or our next method is our drip method. Um, so this is when you actually hold the applicator above the tissue and you're going to give it a little squeeze and the um, solution will drip onto the skin and then you're going to brush it. Um, so both are acceptable methods. Um, completely up to you which one you decide to choose. Um, if you do have excess solution, you can just wipe it away with a tissue or a gauze. Now, um, once again, just remember that you need to let it dry for 60 seconds before it comes in contact with any other skin or products. For a frequency of reapplication, so you're going to inspect the area every shift um, and you can cleanse the film barrier. So if, if there is something on that film barrier, it can be cleansed um, and you can reapply a thin layer um, at least every three days. Um, crackling and flakes of the film uh, may be present, but it is not necessary to um, remove this prior to reapplying. So you can have the crackling and flakes when you go to reapply it. Um, my personal suggestion is just wipe it with some normal saline um, and, and a gauze if that's appropriate for the tissue or just go over it with um, by squirting the saline and tapping it all dry, making sure it's really dry before applying more. Um, just in case, especially in the peri wound or um, the, the perineal area, you, you don't want to be sealing that in also um, either. Okay, so just make sure it's clean before reapplying. Um, and discontinue use when the skin is healthy or risk of skin damage is either minimized or eliminated. So to remove, um, it actually naturally wears off depending on the type of skin and activity level of the patient. So you don't actually have to remove this product, but if it needs to be removed, you can use petroleum jelly, wipe it on, um, and the film barrier should start coming off the skin. Um, now, if your patient has an adverse um, reaction to this product, um, so pain develops, redness, inflammation, heat, um, or changes in the skin color, you're going to discontinue this product. Um, so you, you need to get it removed, so either the um, petroleum jelly to help it lift up. Um, if it enters the eyes, you're going to flush with warm water. Um, do not rub, don't try to separate the eyelids um, and seek medical attention um, immediately. Um, if there is any um, contact with an open wound, you're just gonna flush it with water or saline. Um, complete removal isn't necessary. So that would be your full thickness wounds. If it is just the top layer of skin, that's what this is for. Um, but your full layer wounds, it should not go into. Um, so expected outcomes. Um, if you're using this for moisture associated skin uh, dermatitis, um, that's going to be prevented from getting worse and hopefully it does get better. Um, if you're using it to pr protect the skin from friction or shearing, um, we're hoping to prevent that. Um, the different sizes, so you have a few, just two different sizes. Um, one's for up to a 10 by 10 centimeter uh, space. And the other one is for a space greater than 20 by 25 centimeters. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you did find it educational and informative for your daily practice. Um, and I will catch you in my next video. See you guys.